Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Van West The Past by Kenneth Thomas. This is sort of a sponsored review, sort of, but not really. Basically, I was sent uh, a copy of this for free for review. Uh, I also got compensated for my time for um, writing a review on my book blog. I mean, I review every book I, uh, I do on my book blog, every book I read. Uh, but, I, you know, I try and keep things impartial. Uh, but I thought as I went along as well, there were some interesting things to discuss, so I thought I'd do a video for it as well. I mean, I'm not being paid to do the video, but I did get the book for free. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know how these things work. So... This is Van West The Past, it's the first book in like a sci-fi trilogy, uh, it's pretty YA, but there are also a lot of other elements, as you can tell from it being the, the past, um, there's almost historical fiction going on here. So I'm going to read you the blurb, and then we're going to go through and look at my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, the past, or, or the past if you're southern. The Past is the first book in the Van West sci-fi series about an enforcer who lives in a dystopian Earth of the year 3000 and works for an authoritarian ruler called the Universal Council. Tasked with travelling through time to stop a renegade sect that seeks to change Earth's past, he comes to learn about his dark origins and his unique ability. Falling in love with the daughter of its leader, Mad Newton, great name, he returns to the present to face a difficult choice, whether or not to save her, and be part of the new beginning. So. Overall, I mean, I would say from the cover design, uh, the layout and whatnot, it's not bad. It's clearly been uh, edited as well. I mean, the text is justified, like proper uh, chapter headers and everything. So you always know there's a certain amount of quality going in there. I also thought it was interesting it says um, written in British English right inside the inside cover. Whereas, you know, most books wouldn't, I guess they wouldn't bother telling you it was written in British English. They'd just be like, they'd just publish it in British English or American English. Publish and be damned, wouldn't they? So we start off with this this sort of thing going on, which is basically a bit like a cross between the Hunger Games and the Tri Wizard tournament. Um, I mean, because of me saying that, you could say it sounds derivative, but I mean, I think it works well in the context of the book. So um, you know, um, this this tickled me here as well. So he's talking about this, you know, this Hunger Games styley thing. The Enforcers' battle uniforms are identical except for their helmets. Each has been custom designed to feature an approved brand from one of its elites. Van West's features the food brand logo Insect and Out, Earth's largest food distributor, renowned for their freshly made and succulent cockroach burgers. And um, I'm not American, but I know what In and Out is, so I know what that's a little reference to. But speaking of roaches as well, I mean, it's kind of a constant theme throughout. One thing that did kind of annoy me is that like the characters would say like roaching hell, and they'd call each other like a roach tard and stuff. Um, and I just thought it was a little bit too twee, I think. Um, I don't know. I can see why you would do that for a YA audience, but it just didn't really work for me. So yeah, sometimes we have some of these little formatting errors. So I don't know if you can see that here, but there's a little formatting error there knocking about. I mean, it happens in indie books, you know. I thought this was interesting too, this uh, little mention of the technology that's used here. Uh, attempting to sit up, he finds himself held back by the straps tied around his bruised wrists. Looking at Nurse Rose in confusion, she points to the ceiling above him is connected to a Sherman Reporter Monitor, or SRM. Unlike conventional hospital monitors, it does more than just observe one's vital signs. It reads one's memories and thoughts. Originally, de originally designed to aid medical staff in nursing their patients back to health, the Universal Council's inspectors have long since used the SMR for a much darker purpose, not only to interrogate prisoners, but to their own forces, to check that their enforcers' minds remain uncorrupted and free of devious thoughts. This bit just tickled me here. Um, I'm going to read this out, actually. Um, so this is some information from, uh, you know, the future archives. And I'm at WhatsAppy pinging. So we have here. In 2991, Dr. Isaac von Hellman, later to become Mad Newton, invented the rod-shaped quantum accelerator, the next giant leap for humankind, time travel. During testing, he sent numerous lab-engineered chimpanzees to pre-selected times and locations on Earth, which were programmed into their short-term memory. The results were mixed, with many chimpanzees not rematerializing where and when expected, leading to the cancellation of further tests. Another failure could have been catastrophic, severely changing time and with it the present. Slight changes to history were detected from the first tests, including a news report in 2212 of a chimpanzee materialising at the inauguration of US President Gustavo Gonzalez, and another in 2012 at the Diamond Jubilee concert held for Queen Elizabeth II in London. I saw that footage, that was just Prince Philip, mate. And we get some mentions of the Large Hadron Collider, because again, uh, CERN is like a, you know, recurring theme throughout this. But that's just cool, because I wrote about that in my, uh, in my first novella, No Rest for the Wicked. I thought it was quite cool as well, they give him... Um, 
And a final upload commences, UNESCO Investor Profile 1, that of his own pseudo-identity, along with instructions on how he is expected to behave and act. The profile contains an encyclopedia of physics of 1950, French language, extinct in 2631, visitor character map and biography of philanthropist. So he's a fictional philanthropist called Frederick Jacques. So this is the bit that I do like because obviously it's the past, it's kind of historical fiction mixed with sci-fi. I don't know whether I would enjoy the present or the future as much just because I enjoyed this because it's in the past in France, you know? And so uh, I believe, yeah, we, he gets to Paris and it goes, further confirming that he has indeed gone back in time. Francois looks just like his image, his eyes large and blue, hidden behind thick black framed glasses. The aisle is also cloudy, smoke rises from ashtrays on nearly every seat. Van West cannot help but be amused at the sight of people smoking and drinking lots of wine with bottles and glasses everywhere. Smoking and drinking are hedonistic and forbidden vices, long banged in the year 3000. Busted didn't mention that, did they? They didn't say not much has changed but they live underwater and drinking and smoking have been banned. And I thought this was quite cool, he gets into a taxi and it says, The taxi driver switches on the radio on the car's dashboard. It plays music. The sound is fuzzy, at times dipping in and out as it loses connection. The radio is so primitive, only having an amplitude modulated AM frequency range. He recognises one of the tunes from his Cola Beers tour. It is Edith Piaf's Le Vie en Rose. The song is banned by the Universal Council. It's playing a show of defiance by its citizens that risks imprisonment and hard labour if caught. One thing I did notice here, uh, there's this information here on the new beginning and it's got here 2005 founding of Google at Stanford University, later launched Google Maps. Which is just incorrect because they were formed way before that. In fact, Google Maps was launched in February 2005. I think Google themselves were 97. And yet we've got uh, Van West the Present, book two in this series coming out July, August of 2020 this year. So overall, I mean, I did enjoy reading this. It's not necessarily the genre that I would leap to. And so I would have liked to have seen it be a little grittier. Uh, another little pet peeve, like there are a couple of little minor formatting errors in it. And um, the constant like roaching hell and you roach tarred and stuff kind of annoyed me a little bit. Um, but it's a YA novel, so you don't really want to go all out swearing in it, you know. Um, but overall, I thought there were some cool concepts. I like the idea of time travel. I like the fact that we got to go back and visit Paris in the past. I like that it's tied in with the founding of CERN as well. And overall, not a bad little effort. You can tell it's like pretty well put together. Cover designs, not bad. Having these one or two layout errors, it's pretty nice inside as well. Uh, so I would give it, if I'm feeling generous, a 3.75, if not a 3.5 out of 5. But it was certainly alright, and if it's uh, the kind of uh, book that you're interested in reading, then definitely check it out and support an indie author. So there we have it, that's what I made of Van West The Past by Kenneth Thomas. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments, I guess if you're going to check out this book. Let me know actually if you can think of any other sci-fi books that um, dabble with like historical fiction and time travel into the past as well, because I'd be, I'd be super up for that. Uh, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, uh, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.